Oh, it's good to meet you. Great, Great to meet you, back. Man. And um, so you starred and wrote this movie, but also it's your feature film directorial debut. I'm curious, what's it like wearing all three hats in the process of this movie? Um, as well as cowboy hats, which was the real thing I was intimidated to wear. <laughs> I honestly thought, am I really making a movie where I'm wearing a cowboy hat by the end? <laughs> um, that definitely made me self-conscious that people would, um, my friends would give me shit for that. But um, it, it felt actually, it was challenging, but it also felt very natural to me. I feel that, I feel personally that there's no line between writing and anything else a writer does. And probably musicians feel the same way that everything is music. To me, everything is writing. So the the fact that I might have a specific shot that I'm envisioning, you know, there's nothing different to me from writing. The house is at the end of the longest, loneliest road you've ever seen, but inside there's a surprising warmth. Uh, or showing that. How do you show that? What road do you pick? What house do you pick? How does the camera move? So to me, it's just writing in a different way and acting the exact same way. Who is this character? Well, he's shallow and he's not as cool as he thinks he is, but it's not unrealistic that he might find his heart either. You know, that's the kind of thing you can write or you can, you can try to capture in performance. And what would you say out of the three would be the most difficult or the one you had the most difficulty with during this process? Well, there's a line that writing, writers are people for whom writing is harder than it is for other people. So even though I feel most comfortable writing, it's also the hardest. And whenever I'm directing it's, or acting, it feels like a treat. It's a challenge, but I'm like, oh God, at least I'm not on my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, you know, there's a lot of Texan elements, so it's like the cowboy hats you mentioned, and you went out to West Texas to kind of learn about Texan culture. Yeah. How would you say, how difficult would you say it was to put so much of what it means to live in Texas into this movie as not being someone who experienced much of Texas? Culture? Well, first I want to talk about UT. Ooh, okay. Because when I moved to, to LA, uh, I was 21, and the first person I met was uh, a UT grad uh, who, and all of her friends, were this sort of very tight-knit UT film graduate group. So Maddie, who worked on this sitcom Raising Dad with me, uh, Maddie would, I don't know, I guess she was the first hint of how friendly Texans are. We weren't, we didn't have much in common. We weren't dating or anything, but she would bring me out to join her friends who were all super nice to me. We had nothing in common either, but it, she just saw a lonely guy and brought him over to hang with other people his age. Uh, so nice, and so my first group of friends were these uh, UT kids, and I was jealous because I had not, it seemed to be a great, great film program, and they seemed very close knit. So when I, um, when I started the story and I realized, okay, I need to take my character to Texas because it's gotta be a place he's never been, that he's a little in awe of, and doesn't understand as well as he thinks, I thought, okay, well, he's like me. He um, idolizes the film department of UT. He knows Richard Linklater went there. He's been to South by, and that's it, you know? And there's a lot of people in my social group who think they know Texas because they've been to Austin. Um, and so I was like, well, that's a great starting point for my character. Then, just like my character, I had to learn slowly um, the character and the rhythms of of West Texas. So I went on a lot of trips there. Um, you know, I uh, met up with this guy. I, I wrote um, to this journalist, Christian Wallace, who writes for Texas Monthly. And I had liked his articles, and this woman, Andrea Lopez, I read her book, How to Be a Texan. I think she's also a Texas Monthly writer. So I wrote to her, and I said, I'm a writer. I'm uh, uh, and I'm sure these people knew my name from the office, which helped get their attention. But I said, I'm a writer, I'm going to Texas, I love your book. Can you introduce me to anyone there? She introduced me to Christian. Christian was from Andrews, Texas, and said, oh, well, I'm from Andrews, and I know you want to see Pecos. Why don't we, you know, I happen to be going west anyway on these dates. Why don't you meet my grandma and, you know, meet my friends, and I'll show you the oil fields. And it was also sort of a location scout, how do things look. And I met his crazy friends, and I met his grandma and then we drove out to, to Pecos and I went to the rodeo and um, spent some time there. 
So, um, it, you know, and I was welcomed everywhere and I didn't think I would be. I was made fun of for wearing white sneakers um, at the, the parade, uh, but in general, I, I was very surprised and interested, especially in law enforcement. There's so many different types of law enforcement, which became a part of the movie. Mm -hmm. And um, so you mentioned you went to the rodeo. I'm curious, was there a lot of uh, tech cheer, like a lot of people cheering for tech at the rodeo? Because there, there's the whole joke between uh, you Yes, and well, that's, and... you know, when the trailer came out, I got so much excitement from Texans about that joke. I think people felt really understood that, um, that that is exactly the kind of mistake an outsider would make. So I was very happy. In fact, uh, I don't think that moment came from real life. And certainly it was a stretch that they would invite him down into the arena to defend his argument. But you know, crazy things do happen at rodeos. Yeah. So that didn't come from real life, but definitely real observation. So the character of Ben is very much like you said, had never been to Texas, and that's kind of his whole arc of learning, you know, about this place that he'd never been, the people there. Uh, what would you say you hope the biggest takeaway for audiences everywhere is for the story arc of Ben? I think it's not it, that pe we are all we all have a better person inside us than we think, and that we project, and so do other people. So Ben is really seeing other people as characters and himself as the writer. And in fact, neither of those things are true. He's a person. And the family keeps saying heart sees heart, which he thinks is a, is a tragic misunderstanding because he was just hooking up with this girl. Um, in fact, they were right. He starts to deep down, I think, feel maybe they do see something in my heart. Maybe it is time to step up. and. I think Ben also realizes that the Texans who he thinks of as wacky characters are, are real people as well with some real depth and, um, and intelligence and insight. And I think if there's one thing I, I hope people take away from the movie, it's to realize that all of us are real people underneath our opinions and, and uh, identities. You dip into um, conversations of social media and our interactions with people on uh, platforms like that. And I'm curious um, what you hope people take away or learn about how you can't really maintain a relationship with someone or get to know someone purely through their social media. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, my character is pitching a story at the beginning that fails, but I do think is, is kind of a good story, which is that um, our quote unquote divided times may be about that technology uh, because you know, you can break up with someone and that's when you go through all their pictures and see all the highlights and, and uh, we preserve all these memories. You, you experience something and you take a picture and you look at that picture when it's convenient. It's like we're DVRing our own lives. So I think that's the danger of social media to me is that we think of everything as something to file away and enjoy another time when we should really be on the same page at the same time. Mm -hmm. I guess to wrap things up, what advice would you give to UT students looking to do what you do, whether it be writing, directing, or acting? The thing I always tell people is write for the kids sitting next to you. Don't write for the teacher. So really your generation is gonna have a different voice than my generation. I have a different voice than the previous generation and only your generation can know how to speak to your generation. So don't imitate, learn from, and um, emulate the things you love about films from the past, but really create the new thing. And the only way to do that is to think, what would I really want to see now? What would my friends want to see now? And that way you can become an entertainer and not just someone who gets an A in class. That's great advice. And thank you so much for this Thanks interview. for talking. Yeah, it was, cool. was great. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thank you.